Hey, what is up guys? So glad to see all of your smiling faces. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my experience of setting up a business entity in Malaysia or to be specific, a sole proprietorship. I've documented everything that I've learned in this entire process as a complete beginner. So stick until the end because I'm sure you will find something useful because it is tax, right? And not everyone talk about tax. But trust me, this is a game-changing finance knowledge. Before we begin, a smack of the like button will be very appreciated. Thank you very much. And without further ado, let's jump right into today's content. Let me start off with a brief introduction to how income tax work in Malaysia and trust me, you will want to pay close attention because once you understand it, this is what separates you from the guy across the street. Ask any rich person out there, they all have one thing in common. They either know how to play around taxes or they hire someone to optimize their tax efficiency. Alright, to start this off, in case you don't know already, the tax laws in Malaysia stated that an individual who earns an annual employment income of 34,000 ringgit after EPF deduction has to register a tax file. For those of you who are employed and paying taxes via Borang BE, you should be familiar with the tax rates already. But if you don't, I don't blame you because all of these stuff does take some time to understand. So just a quick crash course. If your monthly gross income is 5,000 ringgit, that means your annual gross income would be roughly 12 times 5,000, which is 60,000 ringgit. Now, that 60k is gross income or gaji kasa, and you can then further deduct that amount with tax relief, such as medical expenses, insurance, PRS, SOXO, laptop, and smartphone, which I'm sure most of you will claim even though you did not buy any of it. So after deducting all of those tax relief, say total 15,000 ringgit, you are then left with 45 5,000 ringgit which is the taxable amount for the particular year. So we can refer to this tax bracket for the range of 35,000 to 50,000 ringgit. So for the 45,000 ringgit taxable amount that we have just now, the first 35,000 is up to 600 ringgit and the next 10,000 ringgit will be subjected to 8% which is 800 ringgit. So all in all, I have to pay 1,400 ringgit of taxes in that year before any tax rebate. I hope you can get this, if not just rewind this section because this is key to understand the sole purpose of setting up a business. So with that in mind, I can then explain to you why I set up this business entity. And apart from my employment, I am also a creator on YouTube as you are watching this video. And as a YouTube creator, we have multiple sources of income, not just from YouTube AdSense, we also have income from affiliate rewards, commission fees, and etc. And according to the tax laws in Malaysia, the scope of taxation states that an individual who is a resident in Malaysia is taxable on all income accruing in or derived from Malaysia and on income received from outside Malaysia. That means whatever income that I'm generating under this YouTube channel is considered taxable. So I need to declare them when I file my personal income tax. Now even though YouTube is technically not based in Malaysia or they are not even a legal entity in Malaysia and my Malaysian audience base is roughly 56% only and some of the affiliate rewards are even paid by foreign companies who don't even have a legal entity in Malaysia. I still need to pay income tax to the Malaysian government because my business operation is in Malaysia since I'm filming all of this video in Malaysia. And this also applies if you are blogging, selling stuff on Shopee or Instagram or Facebook or providing freelance services to foreigners most of them are considered taxable income. With that said, since my taxable income now increases due to the various sources of income, I will then move further into the higher tax bracket, which also means I need to pay more taxes. So in order to pay less tax to the government legally, I can then introduce something called business expense, which is in layman's term, the cost or expense that you incur that is tied to the generation of your business income. So for example, my business is YouTube and I upload videos on YouTube channel to generate YouTube AdSense revenue. So in order to make videos like this one that you are watching, I need to incur costs to buy camera gears, microphones, lightings and etc. And that is how I can treat them as my business expense. If you are not sure the expenses that you are incurring are considered deductible or not, then ask yourself, did you incur this cost to generate your income? And if you are still unsure, it is advisable for you to ask an accountant to get the most accurate answer. So as I've mentioned earlier, my business entity is classified as sole proprietorship. And just to give you a rough idea, there are three types of business entity in Malaysia. We have sole prop, we have LLP which is limited liability partnership 
and Sandrian Berhard. But for the purpose of this video, I will just touch on Soul Prop because that is what I went for ultimately. So with this Soul Prop, I am the sole owner of the business which means there is no separate legal entity and that also means that if there's any debt obligation like a loan in my business, my personal assets will directly be the collateral. Personally, I don't really care so much about that because the business nature of my YouTube channel doesn't really require financing or raising huge amount of capital, at least for now. So not an issue for me for the foreseeable future. Jumping back, the tax rate for sole prop ranges from 0 to 30% which is the same as the personal income tax rate and may differ year to year. In terms of annual fee, you just have to pay 60 ringgit a year for a trade name or 13 ringgit a year for your personal name which is what I went for. I paid for 5 years straight for 150 ringgit so very cheap if you ask me. Advantage wise, there is no audit requirement and it is the easiest and cheapest to set up and maintain and you can even apply for this all online during the lockdown. It does, however, come with some drawbacks where its tax rate is higher than the other two options and it is harder to raise capital and you are solely liable to any of the debt obligation. So in spite of all of those drawbacks, I did ultimately still went for sole proprietorship because it is easier to set up and maintain. Plus, I don't need a partner which is what I personally prefer since I like to execute things quickly on my own. If you ask me which business entity is the best for you, then I would say that Soul Prop would probably fit you because it is the most common and simplest choice for everyone. But if you foresee that you will need financing or you have higher taxable income which you can then benefit from the lower income tax rates, then by all means, go for the LLP. Trust me, I don't need to tell you this but you will know when you need a Sandrian Berhad. Otherwise, just stick to LLP at the maximum. And by the way, if you want to have a rate, I will link this article down below by 3E Accounting Malaysia. So this is just part 1 of the series to hopefully lay the right foundation and basics so you will roughly understand what is the purpose of setting up a business before I even go into how to set up a business, what are the tips and tricks, what you need to know to save yourself trouble and etc which I will cover in the coming weeks. So the ultimate question, should you set up a business if you are building a secondary source of income on top of your employment? The answer is absolutely yes, you will want to set up a business as early as possible so that you can enjoy the maximum tax write-off for the capital expenditure for your business such as expense like buying laptop or a smartphone and etc. If you already have a business, feel free to comment your experience or anything down below in case I've missed anything and hey I'm still a beginner to all of this who knows we can all learn a thing or two from you and by the way do check out the pinned comment down below I will compile all the useful tips and tricks and guides from the community from time to time so that we can all help out each other anyways just a quick disclaimer I am not by any means affiliated with SSM Malaysia nor am I a certified accountant legal or tax advisor everything that I've shared in this video is based on my personal experience only so that is all for today's video I hope you find it useful and with that said thank you very much for watching Stay safe, stay invested, and as usual, I will see you in the next one.